Chapter 6, Boogie Monster. John woke in a cold sweat his heart pounding. He wasn't startled awake by something in his dream it was something else. He had that horrible crawling feeling of being watched. He looked around his room and noticed the door was cracked open. Alex must have come to check on him. Yet something didn't feel right. That is when he heard something, a crash, coming from the kitchen. John jumped up from his bed and opened the closet grabbing a wooden but he kept just in case someone broke into his house. He crept slowly down the hall toward the kitchen. He could see some shadow in the darkness. His eyes playing tricks on him as the shadows wanted to merge and distort the silhouette of the man. John reached for the light switch, held the bat firm and gave the switch a flick. For a moment, just a second the flood of light revealed the man, no, this was no man. What John thought was the distorting shadows was actually the creature's many arms bending in several wrong places like a broken arm. Matted black fur that seemed to ungulate about his body like writhing tentacles or thick black syrup. A massive head on a deformed spider-like body. Eight black pits for eyes, a wide mouth with many crooked sharp teeth and calissary, that was reminiscent of a moustache. The creature looked up to see John. It was only for a second, and the lights no longer wished to show such a monster, they went out with a pop. Triple A-A-H-H-H-H-H-H, moaned the creature. An adult has spotted me, he spoke with a click-clack of a deep guttural voice and at the same time a sweet heavenly voice. John heard the creature sniff the air. No. Ah, uh, C-H-H-H-3-3-L-L-L-L-D-D-D, joy and glee resonated deep inside the thing. On the way to the potty little boy, little girl. It asked. Seems you missed it, it said. John began to feel water dripping down his leg. He was peeing himself. In the face of something like this, who could blame him? The creature let out a gasp and John ran back for his room. That thing would kill him. John stopped at Alex's room as he remembered he had a monster of his own. John pounded on Alex's door. Alex. He called. The door swung open quickly. A burst of cotton candy flames around her. What? She asked scared for John and not upset she was so rudely awakened. Thth there's, John pointed toward the kitchen. Alex didn't need another word. Her flames danced around her arms as she headed for the kitchen. A moment went by and she returned, flameless. There was nothing there, sweetie, she said. But what were you doing up so late? She asked concern and a hint of annoyance in her voice. I heard something in the kitchen and, and tth there was this big monster and dash. Okay calm down, she said, reaching to pull him into her arms. You had a horrible nightmare, come on let's get you cleaned up, she said pulling him back to his room. She got him undressed and went about wiping him down much like yesterday morning. All right keep your legs together, she told him and he felt a new pair of underwear slid up his legs. He moved his butt so she could slide it on the rest of the way. As she was getting his dinosaur pyjamas on something felt odd. He wrote it off from tiredness and soon Alex had him dressed and back in bed she sang him a lullaby e to help calm him down and soon he was back to sleep. John woke up and shifted a bit, he felt something wrapped tightly around his morning wood. It was soft and warm. He couldn't help himself, he hadn't masturbated in a couple of days. Now he was feeling pent up. He began to imagine Alex, sadly sex was entirely on her call but it wasn't going to stop him from daydreaming about her. It didn't take him long come and so long as he got his underwear into the hamper Alex wouldn't know. There came a knock on his door and Alex walked. Hi sweetie, I just wanted to check to see how you were doing, she said. I'm fine, he grumbled and watched as she began to move the bed sheets and started to tug at his pants. What are you doing? He asked, trying to find her off. I wanted to make sure you didn't have another accident after last night, she eventually won and tugged his pants down and giggled. John burned with embarrassment. Well I was expecting a different kind of wet stain, but I'm happy you like your pull-ups, she said. Pull up. John looked down to see he was wearing the training pants, 
worse it was decorated with Disney princesses. You put me in this last night. He yelled. Yes, I felt it was necessary considering the last couple of nights. You said those didn't matter. They were accidents from getting used to you. John, you were very scared from your nightmare and I was worried you would pee the bed again. It was to protect you. Fine. John huffed, but why? John gestured at his new undergarment. Why something so girlish, I hate how everyone mistakes me for one, and this doesn't help. He roared. For one it is adorable and two it was dark I just picked one, she said. I highly doubt a demon, and some royal one at that, has trouble seeing in the dark, John spat. Alex was starting to lose patience she wasn't going to take his embarrassed anger for much longer. She grabbed some new pants and boxers for him and tossed them at him. Get dressed, throw your pull-up away and we can talk about this when you have calmed down, she said and left the room. John stayed in his room for most of the day. It wasn't fair being treated like this. He spent his time on his phone under the covers of his bed. A soft knock came from the door and John sat up to see Alex there. I'm sorry for yelling, John said. Alex smiled and walked over to him giving him a big hug. It's okay, you know I am just trying to help you, she said. Come on, you should probably go potty and then it's time for a nap, John did as he was told. After his nap things returned to normal. As normal as living with Alex had been. He spent his day saying games with Alex. They day wound down and it was time for bed. Did you go potty sweetie? Alex asked. John gave a resigned sigh at the question. Yes, he groaned. All right then come here, she said and revealed another princess pull-up. I am not wearing that. John said taking a step back. Just for tonight, okay? If you can get through the night dry we can talk about big boy undies for bed. You went potty so there shouldn't be any need in the middle of the night, but bedtime is a lot longer than nap time and you could still have an accident, she said. Can it at least be a different design, John whined. Alex smiled and put the pull-up back taking out one with cars, boats and airplanes. Better. But just so you know if you wind up needing these every night eventually you will have to wear the pretty princess ones. I won't need them after tonight, John declared. Alex smiled and held the pull-up out for him to step into. He was dressed in his pyjamas, tucked into bed and read a bedtime story. Good night, sleep tight, don't let the bed bugs bite, and if they do then take your shoe, and hit them until they are back and blue, Alex shut the door as John fell asleep. The door began to creak open. John woke feeling a shiver run down his spine. Triple A A H H H H H H came a moan of a groan. John gave a whimper recognizing the voice both a deep whisper with a soft high pitch. S S S U C H a large room not of a child. But I smell I smell you, little boy, little girl. Croaked the monster. John watched as his door opened wider and the thing's arms cracked and bent as they snuck their way in. Ah, the creature gasped as its big pitch black eyes shone in the glow of the nightlight. The creature retreated for a moment. SSSUCH a SS small L light for SSUCH a big room, it groaned and began to work its way back into the room. SS so many dark corners, SSS suck H a large bed. You will not be safe little boy, little girl. John watched as the large thing crawled along the ceiling and into the darkest part of his room. Not wanting to let it catch him he sprang from the bed and dashed out into the hall. He heard the creature screech and began to chase after him. Where was John to go though? He didn't have time to wake Alex up. John went for the next best thing he turned into the bathroom and slammed the door shut. He locked it and flicked on the lights. John backed away from the door just as he began to hear it scratch at the door. Its arms crookedly snaked their way under the door. They sizzled and smoked as the light burned at them. The creature screeched again and sent its arms in a desperate search for the light switch. John watched in horror as each new arm sporadically shit under the door flailed on agony in search of the light switch and retreated back to recover. All while the thing screeched in pain and frustration. 
John began to cry wondering how long this would take. Not long as each new attempt was closer to flooding the room in darkness. The creature gave another screech its arms retracted back and then silence came after. After a few minutes a gentle knock came from the door. Johnny you okay? Alex called. John just sat there scarred the monster was trying to sound like Alex. I am going to open the door, she said. John heard a click of the lock and the door slowly opened to reveal Alex. John was so happy to see her he got up and ran to her giving her a big hug. Sweetie what's wrong? John sobbed and tried to tell her what happened but all that came out was a babbling mess. Alex however was an expert with babbling incomprehensible languages of learning little ones and upset mumblers. It's just another bad dream sweetie. Can I check your pull up? She asked. John nodded and felt the waistband of his pants pulled down. You are a bit wet, but at least you tried to make it to the potty and that's what counts, she said. John was led back to his room where he was changed into a new pull-up. He made sure to check the design, suns, clouds and a moon. He was dressed and tucked into bed. John grabbed Alex's arm. Will you sleep with me tonight? He asked scared the monster would return and get him. Okay, Alex said and climbed into bed with him. She held him close and ran her fingers through his hair. She sang softly to him until they both fell asleep.